Hello, welcome. See our participant number increasing. So welcome, you are in the right place if you are wanting to be at the San Diego Law Library's presentation on Westlaw Edge training with Dan Feller from Westlaw Thompson Reuters. He is a client manager there. And um, so I'm just gonna get everybody, give everybody a chance to show up, give us a minute or two, but just to go over some housekeeping um, during the presentation. We have turned off the chat feature during this presentation. So if you have any questions for Dan or for us um, or any comments about audio quality or problems with screen sharing, please use the Q&A. I will be monitoring the Q&A to let you know. Um, Dan will be taking questions at the end of the presentation, but feel free when you have one to put it in the Q&A so that we can address it. And um, after this presentation, we you will be redirected to a survey um, just to let us know what you think of this presentation, how we're doing. We really, really appreciate your comments. So please um, take a minute or two to fill out the survey. It helps us out a lot. Um, and just to, to introduce Dan, um, Dan is an expert presenter. He has was a trainer for Westlaw for many years before becoming a client manager. Um, and he is going to be talking about Westlaw Edge, which is the newest Westlaw product. It is the product that we have at the San Diego Law Library on our computers. We also have um, computers in East County at the El Cajon Public Library and in Chula Vista at the Chula Vista Public Library on F Street. We also have this product available there as well. So um, he's going to talk about some of the great features that Westlaw Edge has. And so I will turn it over to Dan now. All Thank right. You. Thank you so much, Valerie, and welcome, everyone. I appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule today to be with us. Uh, as Valerie said, my name is Dan Feller. I'm with Thomson Reuters Westlaw. I work with our government customers. So if some of you are seeing me saying, hey, what happened to my local rep? Don't worry. <laughs> your, uh, your local rep is still there. I work with government accounts, and the law library is one of my accounts. So it's my pleasure to be with you today. Uh, what we're going to cover today is really just some content uh, and functionality that's available through the Law Library's Westlaw Edge Patron Access Plan. So everything I'm showing you today is going to be in that format. I wanted to say that up front because I recognize that some of you may have access to Westlaw Edge on your own subscriptions. And if what you're seeing on the screen looks a little bit different than what you're seeing in your offices, it's because I'm showing it in the Patron Access format. OK, uh, everything that I'm showing you today will be available to you if you go to the law library and access Westlaw through their subscription to Westlaw Edge. So what we're going to start off with is just a quick review of the search functionality within Westlaw. And you'll notice I put up here at the very top West Search Plus, which is new functionality in Westlaw Edge. You still have everything that you've learned previously, the terms and connector searching, natural language searching. But what we're using with uh, West Search Plus is this type ahead type of functionality where Westlaw is going to try to anticipate where you're going with your search terms. So the whole idea here is get your top results listed at the screen so you can get to your results faster. Beyond that, we'll jump into results and look at some results within case law research and citation research within those results. Just a quick review to make sure everyone's on board with uh, the best practices in how to use Westlaw through the patron access plan at the library. We'll also take a look at some statutes and I'll give you a few tips and tricks uh, within uh, statutes to help uh, get you to your answers faster when you're doing statutory research. The library has a full complement of secondary sources as well in their plan, including one that you may not be aware of called practical law. So I'll introduce uh, both secondary sources and different ways that you can uh, get to your answers faster by looking at secondary sources as well as take a peek at practical law. And then I'll round out the hour by looking at some litigation resources within the plan as well. So again, all of this will be done through the, uh, the link that will be the Westlaw patron access subscription through the law library. So without further ado, you can see the new plan listed right here on the screen. And a um, couple of tips for you if you're going into the law library to use their plan. Whenever you log on, uh, the first thing you're going to have to do right up here is take a look at the um, jurisdiction that is highlighted. Whenever uh, things get started, it defaults back to 
all federal. Now, that said, if you have any concerns about seeing previous patrons um, access, the history gets wiped clean every time that uh, someone signs off and signs back on. So it'll just be the history for your session. The moment that you come up here and click on sign off, the history gets wiped clean. The next person won't be able to see what you did uh, during your session, okay? So uh, don't have to worry from a confidentiality standpoint. But you'll notice at the top of the search bar up here, it does have a single search box, just like we had previously. And that search will go through the content sets that I'm highlighting right here, these two columns of content. So in terms of content, you still have access to the primary law, cases, statutes, regulations, and administrative decisions and guidance. You also have access to the secondary sources, including forms products right up here. Um, I'm also going to lump into secondary sources, things like practical law, which I'll show you in a little bit here as well. And then the litigation content is going to cover everything uh, from appellate court briefs, trial court documents, expert materials, jury verdicts and settlements, even trial court orders right over here. So just be aware, all of those content sets are available through the law li library subscription. Now, the first feature we're gonna cover here is something new with respect to the search engine. I mentioned up here, you do a single search. Everything that you've learned previously is still available in this search box up here. So if you like to use terms and connectors, you can still type in things like, you know, slip in the same sentence as fall, like that. And if you ever need a refresher on what those connectors are for terms and connector searching, right over here on the right side of the screen is a link that says advanced. If you click on advanced, it will take you over here and show you all of the different terms and connectors that you can use up in that search bar. OK, and just be aware that if you ever need help with putting together queries, uh, the reference attorneys are also included in the law library subscription. So you can call as a patron, you can call to the 1-800-733-2889 phone number and uh, request help from the reference attorneys. They will help formulate your you putting your queries together. I'll click on Westlaw over here to return back. Otherwise, you do have the ability to just uh, type in natural language queries. And this is where you're going to start noticing a change in the Westlaw Edge functionality. When I come up here and I start typing in terms, I mentioned we're going to do this type ahead type of functionality. If I type in something like employment, you'll notice that Westlaw starts uh, trying to anticipate where am I going with this query? And if you noticed, it was to the point where as, a, as I'm adding additional terms, the queries change. So I just typed in employment with, uh, you know, stop, stopping with the letter M. As I add ENT, you'll notice the queries right up here at the very top will change. What's happening behind the scenes here, everyone, is that Westlaw is looking at your search terms and analyzing it and saying, hey, wait a second, have I been here before? And if I have been here before, do I have enough experience to know what the answer is to the question that's being posed here? So a couple of things on this particular query. Whatever you type up here is gonna be automatically tied to the jurisdiction that you have selected up here in the upper right corner. So even though you're searching through this content right here, you're telling Westlaw, I want you to return federal results. So whenever you sign on, the first thing you want to do is verify, hey, what jurisdiction am I looking for results in? Typically, what most people are going to do is come up here, click on all federal, and change that from all federal to California. What you're doing there, everyone, is by changing it to California, you're saying to Westlaw, when I search through all of that content, I want you to return results for the state of California. That includes in cases, California Supreme Court and all of the courts of appeal. When it goes down to statutes, it brings up California codes. When it goes into secondary sources, it's gonna look for California secondary sources, okay? All the way through all the different content sets. That said, a lot of times my customers are saying, hey, I truly wanna know about everything that's applicable. In, in the state of California, both on a state level and a federal level. And of course, this is gonna be completely dependent 
on the type of research you're doing. If it uh, impacts a federal issue, clearly you want federal cases in there in addition to state. If it's state only type of law, like family law, for example, you might just want to put a check mark in California to limit it to uh, California only materials. In the search I'm going to do today, though, I'm going to add on this check mark right down here where it says include related federal. What this does, everyone, is that it adds on additional level of things that are binding in the California uh, jurisdiction for federal courts. So United States Supreme Court, Ninth Circuit materials, and Ninth Circuit district court materials. So again, as a general rule, before you start your searching here, always take a peek in the upper right corner and say, where do I want my answers to come from? You have access to all 50 states materials. You have access to all federal materials through the law library. That said, most people do like to go to California first, look for an answer here within the state before we expand it out to additional states. Okay, now the jurisdiction is gonna impact the queries that pop up during Westlaw Edge. So if I type in employment here again, you'll notice as I'm typing in letters, Westlaw is trying to anticipate where I'm going and giving me different queries that pop up here. So if I type in employment, you can see different queries pop up. It works uh, for other topics as well. You know, if I type in something like unfair and then trade, you can see it starts bringing up different queries for me to run. Or I could even type in something related to a criminal matter, let's say uh, police. And then as I add another term, look what happens. The queries change. Now, this is important again. Uh, the more terms that you add here, the more tight the queries are gonna be at the very top. It might come to a point, however, where you're adding so many different queries that the suggested queries will not uh, pop up anymore. Uh, maybe it's too new of an area. We're just gonna give you a standard result. But let's go back to that employment discrimination idea here. If I type in employment, okay. Now, the queries that pop up right here, if I see one right here that I'm interested in, what I can do in Edge now is simply click on the query I'm interested in researching. Westlaw, will go ahead and take your query. And it's, this is gonna be a slightly different result than what you've seen in the past. And what I mean by that is that in the past, we would always put the most relevant document at the top. With Westlaw Edge, when you click on one of our queries, not only do we put the most relevant one at the top, we restate the question that you've posed, and then we give you an answer telling you exactly where we got this from. Okay, so again, the queries that pop up are going to be dependent on the terms that you type in, as well as the jurisdiction that you have selected over here. The answers that pop up at the top are likewise going to be dependent on the jurisdiction that you have selected over here. Now, beyond that, you still have access to everything that you had access to before. This new functionality that's here, there where we put the top uh, documents at the very top. Below that are gonna be everything else, okay? So just like you had in Westlaw Classic, you still have access to all of the other cases that are um, applicable to your search query. And you'll notice all the different content sets continue to be listed here on the left side. If you wish to skip past these answers here at the very top, provided in Edge and go in on your own, you still have the ability to scroll down here and use the different filters to narrow your search results down. So for example, one of the more popular filters I see people using all the time in cases is they say, hey, I really wanna just focus in on reported cases, not the unreported. Easy way to get rid of unreported cases, everyone, is just to put a check mark on reported. So I can go from 271 cases down to 74 without changing my query whatsoever. So it's a real good habit to just simply use these filters to narrow things down. I could even get rid of the federal cases here. I'm just hitting the plus sign next to federal. If I wanted to see US Supreme Court, I could put a check mark there. If I just wanna see California specific cases, I've got three Supreme Court cases, 18 courts of appeal cases. I could limit it down by specific court of appeal if I wish. 
But if I want to see all of the cases from California, I can put a check mark in California. And I started with 271 and now I'm down to 21. I haven't changed my query at all. Okay, so that functionality remains. And then finally, the third one that a lot of people like to use is say, hey, I would like to do a search within my search. You can use this box right here, which would just add in another search within the 21 results that you're looking at here. Now, let's jump into one of these cases here and just kind of do a quick review of some good tips when you're uh, doing case law re research on Westlaw. Now, I just jumped into this first case, which happens to be a case from the year 2000. And as a general rule, what most people like to do right away is just kind of look up here in the upper left corner to check on the status of this case, saying, hey, this is a 62-page case right here. Before I put too much time into this, is this still good law? Now, if you think back to when you learned how to do citation research, you guys, I had to learn how to do this in books. Maybe some of you guys did as well. But what we had to do there was get to the uh, appropriate reporter, grab the book where this particular case would be found. So you'd have to look on the spine of the book, pull the book off the shelf that had this particular citation in it, turn to the page where I would find this result on it. And when I finally got there, I would be greeted with a table that listed all sorts of cases that have cited to the case that I'm interested in knowing more about. And ultimately, the question that I was most interested in is, well, I just want to know about what are the cases that potentially have a negative impact on this case? Well, that's what we did with Westlaw in Keysight. we took the cases and said, hey, let's bubble up the most important ones that people want to know about and put it on, their, on, a, on its own separate tab. You'll notice that this case right here has a yellow flag. And you, as you probably all know, a yellow flag means there's some negative history here. But if you need a reminder, you can always come over here and click on Powered by Keysight. And that's where it'll tell you, hey, the case you're looking at has some negative treatment but the case has not been reversed or overruled. Generally, when people see a yellow flag on a case, they're like, okay, I better see what the negative history is, but technically this case in the big is still good. As a general rule, people really get concerned about the red flags. If you see a red flag on a case, that is warning you the case that you're looking at is no longer good law for at least one point of law. Now, if you wanna know what is the status of these negative cases? You know, what cases are considered to be negative? You've got a couple of choices here. You can either click on the yellow flag right up here, which will take you over this tab that says negative treatment, or you can click on negative treatment. What this is going to do is to say of all the cases that are out there that cite to the case that you're looking at, here are the ones that are considered to be negative. You can scroll through this list and see, for example, the one that we determined to be the most negative is this one right here. We put the most negative link right next to it. And then if you're wondering why, what do they have in common? You can just look way over here on the right side and it tells you the head note that they have in common. The issue that they have in common here has to do with appeal and error. And it's a head note one. So I could come back here to the document and look at head note one and see, is that an issue that I'm concerned about, okay? With respect to the other documents or other cases that have cited to this case that are not negative, those would be listed here on the fifth tab where it says citing references. You'll notice that there are 4,136 cases that have cited to the case that we're looking at today. Of those 4136, 42 of those are considered to be negative. So this was a huge, huge advance when we came out with this technology to break it out by these tabs. Again, get us to our answers faster. Tell us which ones we should be concerned about in the negative treatment tab. But I wanna point out under the citing references tab, there's additional resources that are cited here. There are additional documents that have cited to the case that we're looking at. This is important to you as, as attendees of this presentation because the law library has access to all of these sources. So we have uh, trial court orders that have cited this case. 
administrative decisions that have cited this, even secondary sources. There's practical law that we'll be looking at in a little while. All of these resources listed right here under citing references are available in the law library's subscription. Now, just before we jump back into the document itself, um, occasionally I'll get questions on, hey, what is this uh, fourth tab, the history tab? This is almost like a trail map of the case that we're looking at and how, how it made its way through the courts. So initially we had an opinion on Westlaw here, that case with the red flag went up on review and review was granted. And ultimately that review turned into the opinion that we're looking at right here. I can tell it's the opinion we're looking at because we put a box around it. So just in the big, you can see that this case with the yellow flag reversed an, uh, an earlier decision down here, which is why they have a red flag on that earlier decision. So again, the history tab kind of gives you an overview of this case as it's made its way through the courts. The uh, second tab is the filings tab. This also contains information that will allow you as a researcher to really dig deep into understanding what happened in this case. This will contain all of the different briefs, for example, that were uh, submitted before this case became a written opinion. So you can see right here, we've got the appellant's answer to the brief. Here's the reply brief on the merits. Here's the opening brief. Here's the answer to the petition for review. All of those are included in the library's plan. So you do have access to the underlying briefs that were submitted to the court before the court wrote this opinion. And again, as a researcher, this allows you to dig deeper into understanding the issues involved in this particular matter. Now let's look at the document itself. The document, the case itself is gonna be on the tab that says document. It's the one that always pops up first. And otherwise uh, things here in the upper right corners, upper right corner, I beg your pardon. Uh, I like to call these action items. So if you're using the law library's, one of their terminals, you do have the ability to, for example, download a document and uh, take it with you uh, as part of your work product, okay? Within the text itself, you can scroll down here and see again, the West editorial enhancements like the synopsis, which is a summary written by a West editor telling you what happened in this matter. Instead of reading 62 pages to see what happened, you can see in one paragraph exactly what happened. Below that, we've got the West head notes. The West head notes summarize main points of law from the case that you are reviewing. If you want to see where these head notes came from, you simply need to click on the little box next to the head note, and it'll take you down into the text of the opinion. I can tell that head note one and two came from this text right there. Oops, I beg your pardon. This text right here. Okay, so that's what the little one and two mean. Head note three came from this section right here. Head notes four and five came from this paragraph right here. Okay, so that's how you can go back and forth between the head notes and the opinion. A lot of times people like to skim the head notes to get a flavor for what the case is about before they go in and um, look at the text of the opinion uh, more specifically. Now, let me return to Keysight here real quick. A very common misconception when it comes to citation research is that when you look at the case right up here and see a yellow flag, that the case is, you know, has some negative treatment, but you know, everything within the case is generally good. And that's where the misconception is. There's a little bit of a blind spot that some people need to just kind of be reminded of. And, and that is within the text of the case right here, you can see that uh, Goose versus Bechtel right up here, that court, the Supreme Court of California cited to a lot of other cases and they uh, put those citations right here. Now, you as a researcher, what you need to do is, hey, if I'm gonna rely on, excuse me, this section right here to potentially put into my brief, for example, um, if I wanna use that in my brief, ultimately what I need to do is check out the, uh, what's the status of this Foley case right here. Now you've got a couple of choices there. You can either click on the link right here and that'll take you directly to the Foley case. 
And when you do that, you can see the yellow flag on it and see that that case hasn't been reversed or overruled. That's your first option. Or a little known feature that is really powerful. A lot of times what my uh, customers like to do is before they even start reading the case, is they just like to get an idea. Hey, are there any red flags within the text of this case that I should be concerned about? And an easy way to do that, everyone, is right over here, the final tab, where it says Table of Authorities. The Table of Authorities tab is going to say, here's a listing of every single case that the Supreme Court of California relied on when they wrote Goose versus Bechtel. And a lot of times what my customers like to do is just scan through here to see, hey, did they cite to any cases that have red flags on them? Okay, so you can see right here, I'm just scanning through uh, looking at that. I also, just as a general rule, have my um, research set up always to be most detail. I like to see most detail, um, but when it comes to just checking for key site status, a lot of times I just change it to less detail. So I just basically get a citation list uh, so I can see more cases at uh, a single time. Now, when it comes time to, well, what part of this opinion does this red flag impact? Just be aware, you can come over here on the right side, click on the number for 1099, and it's gonna take you back to the document tab and show you and highlight for you the case that has the red flag on it, okay? So again, this isn't something that you have to do every single time, but it's, you know, it is a nice way to, in the big say, hey, uh, Goose versus Bechtel is still good law, but what about the cases cited within Goose versus Bechtel? Look at the table of authorities right here, and you do have the ability to uh, see things uh, specific to each of the cases listed here. Otherwise, you can always click on the name of the case and see what is the key site status for the case that's uh, being cited here as well. Okay. Now, in terms of your work product, I mentioned earlier, you do have the ability to come up here and either email it or print it or download it as part of the patron plan. Uh, depending on the computer terminal that you're accessing from, uh, you do also potentially have the ability to come in here and do a copy. And you'll notice as soon as you do a copy, you've got this thing right here that says copy with reference. What that allows you to do, everyone, is take that copy and if you have uh, access to something like Microsoft Word, you can open up Microsoft Word and instead of taking notes on a yellow pad, you could take notes on a blank piece of paper like that, okay? So all I did here was I did a copy with some text, let go, and just did copy with reference. Now, just as a general rule, you'll notice this says standard, which is you know, gonna be blue book, uh, close to blue book, if you will. You do have the ability to change this to California. And let's just see what it, how it changes here when we do that. Yeah, it's just gonna give you a few additional citations when we change it to California, put it closer to, um, to the California style manual format here. Uh, California style manual typically is gonna want you to put this in italics, put the year next, and then just put the official reporter. So you could conceivably get rid of this second citation, and then you've got it in California style manual uh, if you're taking notes that way. And the way I changed that again, everyone, was when I did a highlight right here, did copy with reference, I just clicked on the little three dots right next to it and changed it to California. What that's gonna allow you to do is when you're uh, researching through the law library, any notes that you take to yourself, the copy with reference will be in California style or closer to California style manual format, if that's a format you prefer. Okay, now let me um, go back here a little bit. And I mentioned that the history does get cleared when, um, whenever you sign off. During your session, the history is active. So right up here, you can see right here, when I hover over history, I can see my recent searches. I can see where I was uh, recently as well. Uh, otherwise, I could come over here and just keep on hitting the back button to uh, go back to my result list. I jumped into a case initially, 
But remember, uh, whenever you run a search, you're going to get results across all content sets, uh, cases, statutes, regulations, secondary sources, uh, you name it. They're all included here, OK? So you can see this is you know, going a lot slower. I like to show that because a lot of times people ignore the fact that uh, you've got your history right here. And it might be easier simply to click on your, um, your query to go back to your search results. Instead of hitting the back button all the time, look at your history during your session. It's active. The minute you sign off uh, of the patron plan at the library, it gets wiped clear. Okay. Now, let's take a look at statutes next. Uh, when I click on statutes using the exact same query that I did right up front, you'll notice I get both state and uh, federal statutes, again, tied to this link right up here. Now, just like cases, if I want to get rid of federal statutes, I absolutely can by putting in a check mark on the jurisdiction box. Now I'm down to California statutes. Now, when it comes to California statutes, everyone, I just want to give you a quick, a quick tip on here. If you know the citation for the statute that you're looking for, the easiest way to bring it up is just simply type in the postal abbreviation for the state of California, CA. Then put the uh, code section that you're looking for. So here I'm looking for the government code, let's say 6254. Okay. If I type it in CA and then GOVT for government code and then the number, I'll go directly to the statute right here. If I type in something like this, government code 6254, you might get results, more results than what you want. Westlaw thinks you're trying to run a general word search. Okay, so if you struggle with bringing up statutes, when you know the citation, again, the easiest thing to do is simply type in CA in front of that, and Westlaw will recognize, hey, you're looking for a particular California government code section. Adding the postal abbreviation before, it's going to get you a lot closer. If you really want to get close, write this one down. We have a template called the California Statutes find like that. You'll notice I typed in California statutes find. Click on this template right here. And this is going to absolutely eliminate the, the need to memorize all of those different abbreviations. You simply go to the code section that you're looking for, type in the number, and Westlaw will take you directly to it. OK, so again, if you don't uh, feel comfortable remembering all of the different code abbreviations, uh, just type in California statutes, find, and that will take you to that template. Now, let's go back to that one that I was looking at here earlier. Just like uh, with statutes, there's a um, kind of a process that I like to follow when it comes to um, statutory research as well. All right, so we were in here. I want to look at this one right here, this one from um, California where it says age discrimination. And just like cases, you've got a number of tabs going across the top, okay? Just like cases, you've got your action items right over here, including the ability to uh, download uh, your work product and take it with you from the law library. Now, when it comes to statutes, you'll notice that the, you, kind of your workflow is pretty similar. You're going to look in the upper left corner to see if there's a flag because, yes, Keysight is included with uh, statutes as well. If I click on this and you see a yellow flag on a statute, that's going to warn you that there's some proposed legislation to change the statute that you're looking at. A red flag on a statute is going to show you that the statute you're looking at has been amended, repealed, superseded, or held on Constitution or preempted in whole or in part. If you bring up a statute or for that matter, a case where there is no flag, then it's still good, okay?
this particular case right here does, or excuse me, statute doesn't have a case on it. So it's, it's solid. What I can do now is read through this statute, which happens to be about a paragraph long, and then try to figure out how do I apply this to a factual situation. And whenever you're faced with that dilemma of, you know, hey, how would the courts apply this to a factual situation? It's nice to have guidance on, on how the courts might rule if I were to go before a judge today. That's what the notes of decision tab is right here. And you'll notice that we have an index to the notes of decision right here. Uh, we learned to call these annotations years ago, but on Westlaw, they're called notes of decision, okay? If you click on this notes of decision tab, you'll have the ability to see the index a second time right up here at the top. And it, then kind of use the uh, index to say, well, this is what I'm really concerned about. I want to know about like same actor inter interference. Well, if I click on that now, now I've got links to the cases that discuss this issue, the very issue that I'm researching. I like to remind people of this because a lot of times um, there's a rule that's in play in the case that they're involved with. And they always say, hey, I'm looking for a case on this issue. Sometimes, you know what? It's better to start with the rule, the statute, and let the West editors guide you to relevant cases on point. So that's what the notes of decision are gonna do. Now you'll notice it says notes of decision 26 here. That's just letting me know that there are 26 annotations within this tab. Just like cases, there's a tab over here though that says citing references. And this is gonna show you every place on Westlaw where this statute is cited. You can see there's actually 240 cases that cite to California Government Code Section 12.941. The 26 that are in the notes of decision just happen to be the ones that the West editors have chosen to put into our books. If you want to dig deeper and see every single case that has cited to um, 12.941, you can simply hover over citing references, go down to cases click on that, and then you can see a listing of all the different cases that cite that. And just like everything else, you've got filters down here where you can narrow it down. You can look at by uh, state court, for example. You can do a word search, search within the results for specific terms as a way to say, hey, I'm looking for additional cases beyond the ones that are in the books. Okay. And also there's a little known feature here. Um, for those of, you that, those of you that do litigation, uh, occasionally people will say to me, hey, I see you've got secondary sources listed here as well. Are the jury instructions, do you ever have links to jury instructions that are applicable to the statute at hand? And you'll notice, yes, we do have secondary sources, but the easiest way to find out uh, uh, relevant jury instructions, everyone, is to go over to the last tab. This one that says context and analysis. You'll notice when I hover over that, the word jury instructions don't appear. So if you're taking notes, write this down. The jury instructions will be found under treatises and practice aids, okay? If there are any relevant jury instructions on point, hover over context and analysis, and then go down to treatises and practice aids. And this is where you can see links to uh, relevant sources like Rudder or you know, California Practice Guides, Employment Litigation right here, Employment Litigator on this particular one. If I go down here a little bit further, you'll see here's a direct link to a Judicial Council of California civil jury instruction. So as part of the library's plan, you have access. Oh, I beg your pardon. This is only going to give me uh, the listing of the link to the jury instruction. So you'll know which one would potentially be uh, available uh, for you to use in court. So this would be section uh, 2570 on age discrimination might be one that you might want to use. Um, one final thing when it comes to um, statutes. As a general rule, when you're looking at the statute, in addition to looking for the key site flag and reading the statute, always make sure that you're looking at the effective date 
of the statute at hand. You can see right here, the one that I'm looking at was effective January 1st of 2003. This is important because the type of case you're in, you know, you, the statute might change a lot. And you have to know for sure, hey, what did the law say when the issue before us became an issue? Okay, the fact of the matter is statutes change all the time. So if you ever need to see what an older version of a law it says, you need to first look out and say, hey, am I looking at the correct version of the law? Let me show you that uh, government code section I showed a minute ago. So again, I'm just typing in CA for California, GOV this time for government code, and then 6254. When I go to this code section, you'll notice this statute, the one that's on the screen right here, became effective on July 23rd, 2021. Well, what happens if the issue before us took place in the first half of July of 2021? I need to know what did the law say at that point in time. Right now, I've got the law as it reads effective July 23rd of 2021. What about July 22nd? How do I find that? Well, we make it real easy on Westlaw. This is available uh, at the, as part of the library's plan, okay? Go to the third tab, everyone the one that says history, hover over history and you'll notice that we've got all sorts of different things here, including different versions of the law. Before I jump into versions, I like to see this in the big. We have a functionality out there called graphical statute. Again, that's under the history tab. I like to look at it this way, everyone, because what this is gonna do is take the statute and put it on a timeline where I can see at the very top up here, how often this law has changed. So you can see there's a green bar right here, which is the current text. And then that corresponds to this green bar right up here. Next to that are all these different gray bars. When I hover over the gray bar, it's gonna tell me, yeah, there's a different version out there. Here's one from June 27th, 2019 to December 31st, 2019. Next to that, I can see, sure enough, there's one from January 1st, 2020 until June, July 22nd, 2021. When I hover over that gray bar, you'll notice it turns blue in the bar as well as down here. All you need to do is activate the bar. When you click on that, it's gonna bring up everything that went into the making of that version of the law. So number one, here's a direct link to that law as it read on the date that the issue became an issue. So I can click on this. Now I've got access to what the law said in the past. Easiest way to get to um, how a statute read in the past is always find the current version of the law. Bring up the current version of the law, hover over the history tab, and then go down to graphical statutes to select the year. Once you've got the year selected, there's my action items in the upper right corner where I can download that version and take that with me, okay? So again, a couple of ways that you can get there, either the history tab and graphical statutes or the history tab and versions. A second reason I like to go to graphical statutes first is that um, that brings up everything that went into the making of that law in one spot right here. Valerie, I see you popped online. Did we have a yes. question on that? I have a question. So um, how far back do does the, um, the historical data go for the yeah. California codes? Okay, there's a, that's a great question. And there's really kind of two answers to that. So when you're looking at the history tab right here and we go to graphical statutes, when you're looking at it here, you can see it goes to about the year 2000, okay? However, the second way that you can pull up older versions of the statutes is to hover over the history tab and then go down to where it says versions. When I click on versions here, I'm gonna get the same uh, results going back to the year 2000, okay? So I can see you know, them listed here and I just have to identify the proper one by looking at the effective date. But I just wanna point out, in addition to the year 2000, we do have a direct link to the California statutes historical listed right over here. 
And when you click on that, you can see we actually go back for California back to about 1987. So if you're looking for an older version beyond the year 2000, what you'd need to do, for example, is click on the year, let's say 1992, and then do a find within 1992. So I could type in CA GOV 6254, and now I have access to the 1992 version of that. So this goes back to about 19, uh, 1987 is the answer to that question, okay? And one more question kind of yeah. added on to that. Yeah. Is there a way that you can easily compare the statutes, um, previous statutes with the current statutes, like do maybe a side-by-side -side comparison yeah. or a red line comparison? Yeah. So the answer is, uh, for some of you, the answer is yes, there is an easy way. If you have access to Westlaw Edge as a subscription in your law firm, for example, or in your government agency, there is a compare feature built in there. The library access, the patron um, access plan doesn't have that capability. What you would need to do here then is essentially download the current version of the law, uh, download the older version of the law, and then do a comparison within Word. So uh, for some of you who have your own Westlaw Edge subscriptions, yes, there is a button that you can click on compare. Uh, if you're accessing through the library, that, that button does not exist, okay? Okay, well, let's go back to my search here and take a look at secondary sources. I mentioned at the top, the library has got access to tons, literally thousands of uh, secondary sources. Those secondary sources are gonna be listed right over here. And you noticed when I did my search earlier, um, this one right here, when I did that as a query, in addition to bringing up uh, cases and statutes, it also brought up secondary sources and practical law as well. Now, the secondary sources are gonna be listed right over here. You can see I got 2000 results here. If I click on those secondary sources, just like cases, just like statutes, the results are gonna be based on my uh, jurisdiction. I have selected right up here in the upper right corner. Now to narrow that down, I can scroll down once again and narrow it down say, hey, just show me the eight results from the state of California. So just be aware that's one of the filters is jurisdiction, where I can say, show me California specific titles dealing with the very issue that I'm research researching right up here. I also have the ability to limit it by publication type or even publication name. So you can see like California jurisprudence is listed here. The Rudder Group practice guides are listed right here as well. Now, another way that people like to access secondary sources is by specific title. So for example, if you know uh, the name, if I just typed up here, Rudder, like that, you're saying, Westlaw saying, hey, are you looking for this? The Rudder Group practice guides and other publications? Yes, I am. So again, researching through um, the law library subscription, you do have access to these different titles, okay? Another way that people like to uh, search uh, is simply just by browsing. I could come over here and click on secondary sources, click on that and say, hey, I'd like to really narrow it down either by state, or if I scroll down here a little bit further, I could even limit it by topic. So I've been talking about employment law. You can see right down here, there is a section down here on employee benefits, executive compensation, or there's another one right here. This is labor and employment. So I can browse in that direction. Uh, occasionally, I'll have people say, well, you know, maybe is there another way to go in, like by practice area? Yeah, there is. Right over here, there's a tab that says practice areas. And then there's that labor and employment. Uh, well, actually here's an uh, employment listed separately. And then I can say, well, am I looking for cases, trial court orders? Well, let's look for secondary sources. And now I've got it limited here. The only thing I'm searching are labor and employment secondary sources. So a lot of different ways you can get in here. Probably the most common way that I see people accessing is just when they're typing in a general word search. Um, they type in something like, you know, evidence, 
oral admission. Now, if you notice here, look what happened here. Just as a quick reminder, as I type in evidence, Westlaw suggesting queries. When I get to a point where Westlaw is saying, hey, now we're kind of getting into a new frontier here. We're not going to you know, uh, give you that answer at the top. You're going to go back to Westlaw Classic looking results. So if you don't click on a suggested query, you're going to get the most relevant document bubbled up to the top, just like you did in Westlaw Classic. And here's secondary sources listed right here. Now, you'll notice that right above secondary sources, is this title called Practical Law. The library has a subscription to Practical Law. This is a uh, publication that uh, Westlaw purchased a number of years ago. It was um, uh, initially one of these uh, services that was really embraced by like the largest 200 law firms in the country, but it's absolutely exploded and become available to um, law firm uh, customers, government customers, uh, corporate customers all uh, have a, a need for this type of publication. It's really what we like to think of as being legal know-how. You know, how do I get something done? Not only how do I educate myself on an issue like a traditional secondary source, but when it comes time to putting pen to paper, how do I uh, make this happen? Now you'll notice there are results available right here when I uh, jump into a general word search. But you'll also notice when I go home here by clicking on uh, Thomson Reuters Westlaw, there is a link that says practical law right above secondary sources. And I want you to notice this is a little bit different if you're accessing it through the library, especially. If you click on practical law, look what happens in the upper left corner. It changes to, it says Thomson Reuters practical law. Um, to go back, just click on that little down arrow and you can click on Westlaw to return to general Westlaw. So this is, again, a, was a separate platform, but we do have it available now as part of your Westlaw Edge subscription. Easiest way to navigate back and forth between the two of them is to just you know, click on that down arrow and change it back to Westlaw. But again, what is practical law? This is a uh, source that, like I said, is uh, legal know-how. This is where you can go to get yourself up to speed and execute uh, any number of transactions. Uh, there's different practice areas listed right here, even sectors if you need to uh, do something, for example, in the healthcare sector. And then each of these uh, articles have different resource types. A practice note is probably the closest thing to a secondary source, but the difference here is that the West editor is not bound by the same publication schedule. They can literally update these practice notes on a daily basis if there's changes to the law. Once you get your hands around a particular issue, you can utilize a practical law standard document to execute a transaction. That standard document can be even further defined using standard clauses. One of the things that keeps people awake at night is have I considered everything? Well, they might formulate a checklist to make sure I've covered everything that I should be covering. A checklist is going to have uh, everything step by step that you should cover to have an airtight transaction or an airtight document, airtight whatever it is you're trying to, uh, to write. All of these can be found in specific toolkits that will have the sum of practice notes, standard documents, standard clauses, and checklists all in one place. Now, again, you can browse by going in here, or you can just type a word search. I'll just type in something like employment discrimination, just like I was doing earlier. What does a practical law have on this topic? Well, we got over 4,000 different results, and you can see they're listed right over here. Practice note overviews, practice notes, which are kind of like uh, written by experts in the field saying, hey, if I were practicing in this area, this is everything I'd want to know to accomplish this task. Standard documents included, checklist. And the first one that pops up is an example of a toolkit. So again, the toolkit is going to have the sum of everything that's available on this particular transaction in one particular spot. So you can see right here, it's giving you an overview, pointing you to different uh, articles that you might want to read about, table of contents on the left side of the screen right here. If you're dealing with employment uh, litigation, for example, 
You can click on that and see all the different employment litigation practice notes we have, standard documents that we have, including, for example, here's a demand letter on behalf of an individual. You can click on that demand letter. Give, it gives you little pointers throughout the text of the letter, right? You know, read this before using this document. Now you're kind of getting to the, be able to pick the mind of the person who wrote this demand letter. And then you've got documents here that you could potentially use to open in Word or download. If I open it in Word right here, it's just simply gonna launch that document and again, get you closer to finished. So this is what that demand letter would look like. A lot of people aren't aware that the law library has this subscription. This is a really valuable tool that the library is invested in for you folks. I uh, highly recommend that you uh, make use of uh, practical law. This is uh, absolutely incredible resource that's available to all patrons. Um, down here a little further are checklists. There's even things in here, um, uh, standard documents right here, for example, you can see like standard language for summary judgment or a motion and eliminate clause regarding immigration status. You're gonna be absolutely astounded of the different types of documents available to you in your practical law subscription. To go back, I'm simply gonna click on the upper left corner and change it back to Westlaw. And speaking of other things that are available through the law library, uh, in addition to general research materials, you guys have access to a large content of litigation resources. Everything from trial court orders, appellate court briefs I showed you earlier as part of when you're looking at a case. Um, one of the things that people are on, a lot of times unaware of is that you have access to other people's work product in trial court doc documents. These are actual documents that have been filed by other attorneys in courts all across the country. So when I click on trial court documents, I am searching just trial court documents. You saw this earlier when I was looking at cases and statutes and said, hey, these are other documents that have cited the document that you're looking at. Here, for example, was trial court documents. Uh, if I want to see things that are available for the state of California, I've got two options. I can click on California right here, or I can go down by practice area right below it. If I go into California, just be aware, this is gonna show you civil trial court documents first. If you're involved in criminal matters, you're gonna to wanna to click on this upper right corner to see criminal trial court documents. And just to give you a context of what this is available here, um, we're gonna always show you the 10 most recent. So you're absolutely gonna to wanna to do a word search up here to narrow down the, the results within this uh, brief bank, if you will. Easiest way to do that is to do a word search up here. So I could do something like, you know, again, employment, discrimination, and once again, that type ahead um, uh, query pops up. Or this is one of the few times I'm gonna recommend that you click on the word advanced. The reason why I like to do the advanced uh, query for trial court documents is this. When I click on advanced here, look what happens. At the very bottom, it's going to show you the different types of motions that you have access to as part of the library subscription. So you could say, for example, hey, I want to do a, a motion to dismiss involving, we'll say, um, all of these terms. I'm going to put in here employment discrimination. Put that in quotations because I'm telling Westlaw, I want those two terms locked in place together, okay? So I'm looking for uh, a motion uh, that has employment discrimination discussed. And look, you've got access to other people's work product that you could potentially uh, utilize to help further your case as well, okay? And just like cases and statutes, follow the tabs from left to right to fully analyze everything related to this particular motion, okay? So again, in addition to cases and statutes, secondary sources and practical law, the library is providing access to our litigation databases for you folks as well. Trial court orders, which are the rulings on the trial court documents listed right here, 
appellate court briefs. If you need to see how much uh, pot potential damages uh, are in a particular matter, you've got access to jury verdicts and settlements, uh, as well as expert materials. If you ever need to utilize an expert, you can see CVs or um, different deposition transcripts uh, from different experts that are available on, on Westlaw as well. So you have a full resource of materials on the patron access Westlaw Edge plan. I see that we are at the top of the hour. So let me stop right there and just see if there were any questions that uh, have come into the chat or questions that folks may have. Thank you very much, Dan. So um, if you have questions, now's the time. We had some that I answered throughout that were easy questions. Um, and I just wanted to also address Carmen's question about is there a difference in history clearing if the database is an icon on the desktop versus logging into it? So at the law library, um, if you, you have to go in through our website to access the Westlaw Edge database. So you would be doing that from our homepage and then clicking on the legal research heading and then going to databases. And that's how you would go into it. And so once you enter into Westlaw, uh, when you click on the, uh, the link, it will automatically log you in. And then you, when you sign out, it will clear the history. There should not be for the law library an icon on your desktop on the computer that you're using if you're using a computer in the law library. So hopefully that answers your question. If not, use the Q&A and, and let me know if I got it wrong, okay? Um, and then Vincent wants to congratulate you on a fabulous presentation, Dan. Oh, and I thank agree. You. <laughs> I think even though we work with Westlaw every day in the law library, I have learned some new tricks too, so I can yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of cool tricks, and I, you know, I can't tell you how many times, especially that uh, graphical statute one. You know, going back in time, that's one where I've had more people tell me, "I wish I knew about that last week." So, if you can uh, remember that one, look under that history tab. That's the easiest way to go back in time. And, and I also just wanted to add in a little. Uh, you've done a great job boosting the law library, and I appreciate that very much, Dan. We are very grateful to have you here today and Thank to be uh, saying nice things about us. Um, but I also wanted to let everyone know that uh, we do have a lot of historical materials at the library. So if, for example, you are in need of S California codes prior to 1987, we have them going back all the way to the 1800s. So feel free to come in if you need some historical research. We, are, we love a good scavenger hunt at the library. Um, <laughs> And, I ha and we have most of the practice guides that we were mentioning here, the California practice guides. We do also have those in print. So if ever you, you know, are feeling you want to just page through it, you want to look at the index, you feel like it's easier to do print materials for whatever reason, um, we always have that available to you. And I also, also wanted to let everybody know that if you bring in your own laptop to the law library um, and you log on to our Wi-Fi, which is free currently to use our Wi-Fi, you can access these databases from your laptop computer as well so that you are able to download content right onto your own personal laptop. So just wanted to let you guys know that too. And it looks like, are there any other questions? Seems like no. So I think we're done for the day. Thank you guys very much for coming with us. Thank you very, very much, Dan, for this My wonderful pleasure. presentation. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Happy um, New Year, everyone. Yes, and all, for all the attendees, you should get your MCLE certificate in you, via email shortly. Um, and if you have any questions, you can always email the law library at refdesk at San Diego, uh, sdlawlibrary.org. So refdesk at sdlawlibrary.org about any content or if you need any research assistance. And uh, you'll be redirected to that survey right as soon as we hit quit on the webinar. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Dan. My pleasure. Thank you. Have a good day, everybody.